Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Substance abuse is the harmful use of substances, including illicit drugs, which have a profound effect on mental processes. Substance abuse can lead to dependence, a dependence syndrome, which typically includes an overwhelming desire for the drug or substance and difficulty in controlling its use. The World Health Organization records that the harmful use of alcohol leads to 3.3 million deaths a year. At least 15.3 million people have drug use disorders and injecting drug use encourages HIV infection. In the studio with me to discuss substance abuse is Dr. Otefe Edebi. He's a consultant psychiatrist, psychologist, and medical director of, of Grace Hill Behavioral Health si Services in Lagos. That used to be Grace Hill Consult. <laughs> That's why I'm skipping and tripping on it. You're welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Mary. Glad to be on the show. Now, substance abuse. Is it true that it's more prevalent in teenagers? Yes. Um, for obvious reasons. Um, what are these reasons? Um, <laughs> at that stage, at the adolescent stage, um, many te teenagers feel they are superhumans. They feel they don't want to be controlled. They want to experiment life. In psychology, we say that's the, that's the period of the identity, role identity issue. So it's a point where they are trying to define themselves, find themselves in society. So, uh, and so at that stage, they are doing a lot of experimentation. They are coming into themselves and experiencing things that prior to that time, they had not experienced feelings that the, prior to that time, they did not, you know, experience. A, a child doesn't, a, a, a much younger child doesn't really deal that much with the issue of self-esteem and all that. But well, as you come into the teenage years, you begin to experience those feelings. You begin to realize that there are categories. A much younger child doesn't know whether there's the rich or the poor, but as he begins to come into that stage of life, he begins to identify that there are this class of people that class of people. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I, this problem seems to be more prevalent with boys. Yes. For because yeah. I, I don't think girls have so much of a problem with... What causes this identity, identity crisis anyway? Well, it occurs both with males and females. You must understand that when it comes to drug abuse, there is um, the social um, um, interpretation to it. And what I mean by that is that there is what is socially acceptable. and no, So society tends to permit men to do certain things okay. and tend to frown at women doing certain things. Then secondly, at that stage, um, girls are, are said to deal with their issues by um, finding someone to talk to. Guys tend to avoid, you know, and that simple difference in coping, coping style that is likely between the males and the females also um, tends to show in their exploration of drugs a lady mm -hmm. will talk a young girl will talk her problems with you know so on the guys will generally avoid and try to escape that issue and drugs becomes um something an escape to, route an escape route, yeah so so who is at risk for drug abuse or substance abuse well that's a fantastic question um it's uh, because we are talking about male and female so someone will quickly think that the male child is at risk not, not really um when we talk about drug abuse um, there are many risk factors. Um, background plays a major, major role. Especially like parents who are abused yes, as well. Exactly. You know, especially when we are thinking about why would one individual progress to become dependent and somebody else, you know, does the same thing and seemingly does not progress to become dependent on drugs. One of the major things is, um, that has been seen by research is the genetic factor to it. People who come from a home that there's already a history of drug abuse or drug dependence. Maybe a parent is already dependent, an alcoholic father or an alcoholic mom. Well, or you said genetic factor. Does it now mean that the genes are affected? There's a tendency for the person to be born that way? Yes, there is. Um, research has shown that um, there, there is a tendency. Doesn't now mean because there is, there is a predisposition meeting um, um, the environment. So there is nurture and nature playing, playing, playing its role here. So there, there may be a tendency because there's something we call an addictive personality. There are people who, by their personality, may have a tendency to become dependent or have a tendency to explore 
that aspect but there are also social roles so you can't just completely target to mm -hmm. one's genes mm -hmm. and say and then also um, research too has shown that people who uh, mothers who are, are addicts when they have their babies that's why we deal with issues like cocaine and all that sometimes they also have babies that even at a time of birth they start experiencing withdrawal effect so the babies seemingly have been born exposed yes and has been already disadvantaged already so so sometimes you see clear cases we still argue that there is multiple factors you can't pinpoint it to one thing there are the multiple factors of the family the family you know a child growing up and seeing the behavior seeing beyond the family there's also the environment people who grow up in environments where drugs are free drugs are available violence is available and all that that's a way of life in that community they also are more at risk of you know exploring that as a part of um, their coping strategy now presumably um the use of drugs has harmful effects yes it does and one wouldn't expect that someone would go into it yep. with eyes open so to speak yep. so how do they get into it <laughs> are they deceived do they not have the facts Okay. I, th I think I like that last statement. Do they not have the facts? I think that's really the issue there. Because um, when drugs are presented to you, they don't present the other side. They don't tell you the other facts about drugs. Drugs in itself, you know, the use of drugs, in all fairness, is not altogether bad. Because this is somebody dealing with, let, let's take for a typical example, someone dealing with low self-esteem. He takes a drug, he feels... He feels elated, he feels confident, he feels he can talk and all that. But it doesn't last. It doesn't last. But for that brief moment, he lives the life he, he, he desires. So, of course, the pleasure center is affected because there's a, there's, a, there's, a, uh, you know, there's a chemical undertone to it in the brain. So the pleasure center is affected, the, the individual feels happy. I mean, if you look at it, in short, we all want to be happy. That's the ultimate reason we go to make money, we go to we go So to the secret is to find out safe ways of being happy. Exactly. Or, and also the balance. The balance between, um, you know, you get the whole fact. Many times the drug dealers just tell you what you want to know. It will make you smarter. It will make you more creative. It will make you, you know, bold. It will make the girls like you. It will make the boys like you. That's the only side. Anything you want to hear, they'll tell you. Okay, we've, I've heard that creative bit yeah. a lot. Yeah. Let's get the truth today. Does it really bring the creativity out in someone? Well, let's put it this way. Um, it's like a cop. It starts out appearing that way. Um, I remember one individual told me, he said, every time he plays a particular video game with a friend, he always loses. But the first day he took India him, he beat the friend. Okay. A lot of musicians... Some musicians tell you, okay, um, when they take it, they become more creative and all that. That's simply because at that point, your senses are heightened. Okay. Your, your appreciation for things are, are heightened. And sometimes people mistake that to be that I am more creative. Now, that's how it starts out. But you continue and it begins to tilt to the other side. The other side which nobody usually talks about or they hide from you. The other side is that at the end of the day, you are like they say in uh, the white man says penny uh, penny wise pound, pound foolish. foolish so you start out seemingly looking more creative but in the long run you are far from being creative if anything your life is completely ruined completely ruined yep. now there's there's this thing that is usually reported people die of an overdose yep. of drugs yep. so apparently they didn't know how much to take i know yep. you, you shouldn't take yep. in the first place yep. but these people have been taking yeah and then one day they just die of an overdose. Yeah. What makes them take more? <laughs> okay, you know there's uh, there's a concept in when we talk about drugs called tolerance. Okay, tolerance means um, to to take the same dose, but it doesn't have the same effect. So an individual takes a certain quantity when it starts out. It gives him this pleasure, but at some stage that same quantity no longer gives the desired pleasure so he has to take more so his his senses somehow begin to get deadened as not necessarily deadened the the word is to, he begins to tolerate that level 
and that's why an individual will say, okay, I couldn't take, I could only take one bottle of alcohol when I started out. Now I can take three. Now I can take four. To him, he feels that I have become stronger. Okay. But actually what's happening is that he has developed tolerance at that level. So he needs to take more. But you see, he's increasing his dose, but the body has its limit. And all it's given to him at that point is pleasure. You know, there was an experiment done a long time ago about demonstrating this, the power of pleasure. There was rats, where, um, they, they, they connected the, an instrument to his pleasure center in the brain. And so every time the, the rats discovered that every time he presses a particular lever, he gets excited. These rats ended up pressing the lever, pressing the lever, pressing until he died. Okay, so it was also seeking pleasure. Yes, so it is, this, it is not in a bid to kill themselves. It's in, it's in the bid to get pleasure. I, 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 I'm not getting the pleasure I used to get, so I need to take so more. So is that I need danger to take always there? That danger of yes, having to always increase the dose yes, until is. the body can't handle yes, it, it anymore. That, that's when one becomes dependent. It's, there's that danger. Even some of them will tell you, I've had patients say that when I'm in my heightened state, I am literally scared out of my bones because I'm worried I may not come back again. But when they, when they, when they come down from the effect, they still want to go back there.